How is it feels to become an MP in a large urban area? Well, it's um, it's it's maybe even tougher than it is in a in a small community where everybody knows you and you you actually so we work very hard in a large urban community to make sure that we create the events where citizens can come and learn what we're doing uh, I do an online Facebook chat every Sunday night at nine for over nine years um, neighborhood checkups going to events but it's a it's a you know, in particular in this riding where lots of people live in big apartment buildings, don't know their neighbors, uh, that uh, and this riding changes over really within five years. Lots of people moving in and out, very mobile. Uh, so you can't rest on your laurels in a in an urban riding because uh, people move so much. Yeah. Uh, what is it like to be part of Quezon period in Ottawa? Well, at the moment, it's like being in some circus. Uh, it's a uh, uh, question period is uh, um, question period, not answer period. I think we're becoming more and more frustrated that the ministers don't seem to think that they need to answer the question. And sometimes even if the minister's sitting there in the chamber, um, that a parliamentary secretary gets up and answers the questions instead of the minister. So uh, uh, we're finding it pretty frustrating. When I was a minister, I took question period pretty seriously that I felt I really did need the answers. Uh, now it's just the talking points and repeating the same thing 20 times and um, it's uh, it's not the accountability and transparency. I think that 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 question period is supposed to um, uh, perform uh, for Canadians. And I it, lovingly occasionally on Wednesdays we'll look at the prime prime minister's question time at Westminster in the UK to see what a question period really ought to look like. And uh, occasionally I've gone. To, to watch, just to in envy. Uh, what was like for you to be elected by the voters in your area? It, it was, uh, um, of course, I ran and lost the first time in uh, when I ran provincially. And so you don't take anything for granted. Uh, I think that I, uh, in running federally in <clears throat> 1997, um, it, uh, I was very, very honored uh, to receive over 50 percent of the vote and um and but uh i think because it's where i grew up and and uh where my kids grew up and uh and where lots of the babies i've delivered live and now even some of them are able to vote for me that it's it, it is uh it is a real community that uh, makes me very proud to represent uh, what is it like to represent your area in ottawa well, I think that what's interesting about urban areas is that uh, um, that the so many issues that matter in cities cross a lot of different government um, departments in a certain all the different jurisdictions. So it's been really, I think, important since the last municipal election that we have these summits, like we'll have this Sunday of myself and Minister Hoskins, the three city councillors, the the school trustees all working together is, uh, is what we now are very proud to call the St. Paul's model, that we don't blame other levels of government. Uh, but I've been very clear that the things that matter to the people of St. Paul's, are, it's my job to take those to Ottawa. I think that um, they're big picture people and whether they're com complaining about climate change or, or uh, the rights of indigenous people um, or traffic and uh, transportation, affordable housing, all of those things, I think that I feel my job is to represent those those concerns in Ottawa. I think that, that there's been uh, a real uh, change uh, since this Conservative government where the MPs seem to have been persuaded that their job is to represent the wishes of the Prime Minister and the party to the people in their writings as a sort of cheerleader to say, isn't it great, um, as opposed to really having honest, tough conversations about the things that are worrying um, uh, the, the people who live in their writings um, to Ottawa. How do you feel, uh, how do you get the media coverage? 
Um, yeah, it, it's a uh, it's it's much more difficult in uh, in urban settings. I think that lots of uh, people in the rural ridings uh, have cable shows, have uh, regular um, uh, you know after a budget, they all the media will ask for their response. Um, in the urban settings, it tends to be the ministers that respond, or or the national media that that are represented here in Toronto. Uh, so it's a um, I think that I'm pleased, uh, you know, obviously every time I'm invited to go on Power and Politics, that is helpful in a certain way. But I love now the uh, my um, ongoing um, uh, appearance on the Aboriginal People's Television Network. Every Thursday there's a political panel that I am able to, to participate in. But I think that we are also, I think, getting the cross-pollination with social media and that that uh, by working very hard on Twitter and Facebook, that again, that that, that um, is another way of, of, of dealing with people um, disintermediated from, from the mainstream media. Uh, do you feel that Toronto's voice is heard federally? Uh, I... I am concerned uh, that at the moment um, that the government is, um, is has sort of written us off in some way. I don't think that even the senators that have been appointed from Toronto are actually taking their job seriously. Uh, you know, when we've invited them to things, they don't come. Um, in the senators that live here in St. Paul's, uh, but I think that the, you know, it's a, um, um, it's it's tough. I think when um, the the government of the day doesn't think that you know there are any votes in being nice to Toronto, um, it, because I think they think that certainly in um, downtown Toronto that they don't tend to vote conservative. Thank you so much. That's my last question. Oh, okay. Thank you so much.